Hello and welcome to Writers Conduit 2021. This is the first panel of uh, day two. <laughs> Going great so far. Uh, I'm Sarah, you can call me Lemmy. Uh, and this is Own Voices, Queerness and Fiction. Um, we have four panelists today. I'm just the panel host. <laughs> um, and we'll go around and let's introduce ourselves. So Raven, our panel lead, why don't you go first? Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Raven. My pronouns are they, them. I write uh, urban fantasy with a heavy focus on queer representation of all kinds, which is why I am here. <laughs> it's it's my thing. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, Chris, why don't you go next? Uh -huh. Chris? Oh, uh, my name is Chris. <laughs> I use they them. Um, I'm fo I'm focusing on fantasy with queer rep, in, especially in my in religious context as well for re for queer rep. Yeah, in my in my story. So, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right, Fen. Hi, folks. I am Fen. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, or they, them interchangeably. Um, my particular writing, I write a variety of things. I do poetry, I do prose. My prose tends to focus on horror and uh, modern day fantasy, but I can do all sorts, really. You might have recognized my old gods versus aliens piece that goes around every so often. <laughs> um, I am here because I am writing my own non-binary representation in fiction um, and it turns out that we've got a lot of A's on the panel, so happy with that. Last but not least, go ahead Kit. Hi, I'm Kit. I write science fantasy. Um, I do think a lot about representation, though most of my uh, the work that I do write is just I don't generally focus on the uh, the gender, the uh, pronouns of the character as a whole lot. I do have some poetry, which is more focused on like my personal experiences as non-binary and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, I'm gonna take these off again because I'm gonna talk more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get started, I want to remind you what else is going on right now. Um, we have Believable World Building over on Sol Sable Aradia's uh, channel and um, Finding Your Online Community on Itanchi Scan channel. Pardon the, the pronunciations. Um, but there's also a Chill and Chat lo lobby on uh, Eli Quake's channel. Um, and you can always do, I was just going to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, you could use the events now command uh, to get the URLs and go and, you know, check those out. Um, if you have a question, oh yeah, if uh, if you guys have Twitch channels too, go ahead and raise your hands. Viking okay. Van Harrell. Sometimes Raven. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I do. I don't use it much. You'll see my. Uh, my my son playing uh, video games or trying to draw sometimes on it. I'm like, my spawn wants to stream. <laughs> my partner just casually in the background. Hopefully we won't have too much fun. We'll just skip it a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, we will have some time at the end of the panel for like a Q and A, um, but if you have a question, Feel free to ask it at any time. We just ask that you put question in all caps before it so I don't miss it. Um, <laughs> uh, besides that, I think we're ready to go. So Raven, as our panel lead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure at all. So we've been, we've been uh, debating what to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> debating quite uh, heavily and um, one of the main things we wanted to talk about was um, specifically what we can do to write good queer representation and I think we wanted to start with um, definitions <laughs> uh, so oh hi Shrin uh, so, um, 
so we were going to talk about a little bit, not too much, because it is quite a long and contentious topic. We were going to talk a little bit about the difference between queer coding and queer baiting in media and what those two things are. So um, queer coding, we said, is deliberate or otherwise. It's the writing of a character to seem queer in some way without necessarily making it explicitly said in the in the work of fiction and queer baiting is uh deliberately writing characters to seem queer with no actual intent of following through with that um so i think um because it gets thrown around a lot i think uh we should probably start with um what 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 do what do we all think is uh is, is a good sort of uh place to start with thinking about sort of how you're going to represent uh you queer identities in in your fiction uh i don't know if who wants to start i've got on screen kits next so let's go there <laughs> uh, okay well <laughs> For me, I mean, if I'm debating about queer quoting and queer baiting, obviously I feel queer baiting is more wrong because what you're doing is presenting this, this overly uh, satirized version for people to, to latch onto with it basically making it like a stronger plot thread in your story without like having that go to resolution. Well, queer coding is like these are the characters so some of these characters might be queer and therefore they have the aspects and mannerisms but it might not be a major plot that not the people's uh gender and identities are not always going to be the main story or part of the main story arcs. they exist and they need to exist it's part of the world building and backstory for your character so i actually feel that that coding because you know Straight people are straight coded in, in, in fiction, you know, be it they grab their whatevers and do whatever, you know, and, and what they do. So I feel that all characters need to be coded in some way, but it's when you go into that, uh, you're actually baiting the audience with a very specific attention that you get into a lot of the, the trouble in fiction. Hmm. Thanks. So for me, the idea with queer coding is that it's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, when you hold it up against queer baiting, it can feel like it's a good thing. And underneath queer coding, we've got the subset of queer subtext. Uh, queer subtext can be, we wanted to make these characters explicitly clear, but due to arbitrary rules like the big bad boogeyman over in Russia or China or the big bad guy of the year um, doesn't want us to do that over there. So honestly, we can't do anything about it. We're just going to put the notes in and hope you pick up on them. But queer coding can also be ne uh, a negative aspect because look at every pretty much Disney villain. Ursula, Scar, you know, like they are all... They're all just a little bit. They're all not explicit. <laughs> but queer people look at them and see themselves in it, in them. And um, yeah, that can be... I mean, it kind of backfired because we're all just hot for villains now. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's still frustrating to see the only representation of yourself um, in the villains and Disney, especially. I know we said we weren't going to talk about any explicit examples. We could talk about Disney. I think everyone Disney, knows about Disney. <laughs> Disney, ex <laughs> Disney especially are so guilty of it because Disney are always putting out articles that are just like Disney's first, first gay, ever character. gay character. First ever on screen gay character. Um, what are we on six now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, like those <laughs> ladies and <laughs> finding Dory. They're holding hands. Oh. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Ow. But it's like in, in Beauty and the Beast, LeFou was called the first openly on screen oh. gay character. And it's just like, why is he the first openly on screen gay character? Because he behaves a little effeminately while singing the song. Cool. Thanks, Disney. We'll take it from here. Off you go. Um, so, 
I think while it's tempting for us to sort of like look at all of the, we, we end up falling into a trap really with queer coding is because we want queer representation that looks like us and queer people do present a certain way. Mm. But then we also don't want to fall into the stereotype of, well, they look that way. So of course they're queer. So we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't really. So yeah, just do what we want. Pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? Um, I think a lot of things has been said. With wait, wait, just a second. Hold on. What? What's happening? We're, sorry. We're, we're I'm so exploding. sorry. I redid the names. Oh. Okay, we're good. Oh, okay. Now everybody can see everybody. Oh, I me, I something guess. wrong with the audio or something. I'm so sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I would say that, like Ben said, that the queer coding is often goes to the villains and quite rare to see with with the good guys like it's not rare it's almost like almost none uh queer coding done for at least the good guys like they, they deliberately painting the queer people as villains that that's all that they can do to to uh to us so it's kind of like baffled me that most of the the queer people that disney <laughs> um uh, always represented is either they are minor characters or they are villains like minor characters like in the in the movie onward they keep mm. saying they have the they keep saying they have the first ever uh lesbian couple in disney uh, but i mean come on i mean come on the one disney character i could think of that is openly queer coded is pleakly from from lilo and stitch i mean i mean the alien is like it's like like geez. I'm sorry, I'm almost ranting there. I, I should stop myself there. But yeah, that's what I said. Like, it's so rare for queer people to be represented as remote as anything good. And it's just non existent mm. in any media or anything. And the worst of all, like these queer coding sometimes can be can be viewed as queer baiting instead because it just it's not really happening. It's just like they're showing that oh, they just only say it in articles and stuff oh these are the first ever queer couple or queer character but in the media it's almost like just baiting us that to think that it is they are actually queer so yeah now, that's my thoughts i feel that this is more of a problem for visual media since much of the cues are done with physical mannerisms and such mm -hmm. well, in writing it's a lot less of an issue because you know oftentimes it's more subtle and more difficult to have that exact type of thing in fiction, mm -hmm. you know? And oftentimes the villains are doing other things to get people's attention. Of course, we all know the issue of writing villains is that they often always end up more interesting than the main character in fiction where yeah. the main character isn't greatly developed because they, I mean, it's mostly a, an aspect of motivation, you know? so they're always going to be a little bit more memorable these days in fiction anyway. So it's, it, but in Disney is completely to blame for what Disney does. And there's a lot of uh, issues with, with other media simply because of visual aspects and what has gone mm -hmm. in the culture of creation in, in those things. Definitely. I think, uh, yeah, fortunately, because, because uh, it's such a, difficult media to sort of have proper visuals with it's definitely less of a problem in in writing but i imagine there's still things here and there that would uh, raise an eyebrow or two you still have people who grew up on disney who are doing the same things because that's what their experience is it's yeah, kind of this interconnected web i can yeah did web think of you know, I can one. Yeah, I'm gonna, web. Yeah, <laughs> open that kind of one. I can one. <laughs> <laughs> open that kind of one. I can one. <laughs> yes, I want it. Um, <laughs> open that kind of one. <laughs> so uh, we got a couple of questions in chat before I carry on. Yeah, I was going to point those out. Yeah, I've been sort of collecting them as I go. <laughs> Me too. Hey. Just in peace. <laughs> Woo. Uh, so one was, uh, for homework purposes, what are some of your favorite good representations in media? Um, personally, um, I think um, that's actually 
quite hard. Um, <laughs> I've got a couple if you want. Yes, go for it. Go think. for it. Yeah. So one of the ones, excuse me. I've got my book bookshelf at the top. I was going to tell you not to put them away. Yeah, I put them away. I don't know why. Here's my homework. This book is called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Um, and the queerness is the kind of representation that I like in that it's just tangential. Like the main character has relationships with men, with women. As time goes on, she loves how gender becomes more of a fluid thing, more of a blurred thing. Um, and her queerness is never sort of explicitly stated. It just is. So um, without spoiling thing, it's, it's, it's a really good book. It's fantasy. It's romance. It is a little bit queer. It's not, it's not in your face queer. Um, and it's not in your face romance either. I don't usually like romance, but I loved this one. It broke my heart. So you have been warned. Um, <laughs> another one that I like for positive representation um, is a fantasy book series that was recommended to me by one of my uh, friends. And it is called Dragon Oak, I believe. All one word. It has got uh, the main characters are um, women who fall in love with one another. And then more characters are introduced who are also women. There are trans characters, there are non-binary characters, there are, you know, all of these amazing varied characters. And again, it's just not dwelled on mm. at all. There's no, oh, you've gone through all of this and there's no building their entire identity around this. The trans woman does make a comment about her trans status. She's just like, yeah, when I was born, they said I was a boy. When I grew up, they tried to say I was a boy. I grew up, I hit them, I said, no, I'm a girl, I will be a girl, you can't stop me, I am a girl. And then that's it, end of discussion. And at no point does anybody misgender her or refer to her with the wrong pronouns or, you know, treat her disrespectfully because of that. And it was just so heartwarming to read. So I loved um, Dragon Oak as well. I believe it's a trilogy. I've only read one and two. Go check them out. They're so good. Good representation. Uh, does anyone else have recommendations? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to recommend Arcane Ascension by Andrew Rowe. This is kind of a, uh, it's a fantasy series. Let um, me see if it, that's the name of the series. Let me go see the title. And the main character is very much almost uh, an ace. And there's some, there's several non-binary Binary series. Yes, Arcane Ascension. The first book is sufficiently advanced magic, and uh, it's about uh, a young man who go basically who gets magic and goes to like a magic school. We all have magic schools, don't we? Uh, Cram hints, and there's some uh, dungeon tower climbing. And I, I felt that that always had like a, a good queer representation in that series. Do you have any recommendations, Chris? Um, unfortunately, no, I only start picking up some queer books because it's very hard to look for it in my country because queer is not really welcome mm -hmm. here. So I need to search it up in the net or find recommendations from other readers. Mm. So yeah, the only, sadly, I don't have it. <laughs> the only one I can think of is, uh, I, I didn't really, I didn't bring up because I can't actually remember <laughs> if the oh, character no. I'm thinking of is actually queer. Or if I have taken her coding and gone, she is gay now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> They're the best gay characters. Just in case she is actually gay, um, the Skyscraper Throne series by Tom Pollock. It's an urban fantasy series around London, which sort of makes London into, it, it makes modern fairy tales out of London. So mm -hmm. it, it brings to life the magic of, of, the city and man-made structures and there's a character in that who i think <laughs> i think she's gay but i could have just made that up in my head <laughs> nothing like projection we love it <laughs> but it, it's, ah, a, yes, it's a wonderful projection. trilogy either way so i i, I just want to uh recommend it either way um but also everyone here is an author right Technically, in one, way way another. in one way or another. So if you're looking for queer, yeah. right, like queer people, maybe maybe check us all out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially fans. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> you. Um, 
skyscraper throne. Um, I remembered another series, um, Underrealms. Um, I think they're Underrealms. Uh, the dude is actually here on Twitch, but I can't remember what his username is. <laughs> but he writes characters that's got ace and non-binary and gay and whatever characters in it and I've heard that they're quite good I haven't had the chance to check them out yet they've been on my wish list forever <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah, uh, good point. if you guys want to put it on discord in um, panel word number three you can just drop all your uh, recommendations there just so we have like a you know text based yes. recommendation list because I'm going to forget all of these I don't know about anyone else exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh please um so what else do we have we have a couple more questions um one i think was supposed to be for us uh i thought steven universe did okay but what are your thoughts has anyone else seen steven universe so i've seen some of it i haven't seen all of it i've seen, I've seen all of it i watched it just not just not most of it I am quite invested with Ruby and Sapphire's storyline. So that is great. That. Yeah, they're great. I I've think, seen uh, most of it. Yeah, personally, I, yeah, personally, they at least more realistic relationship I ever see in for queer mm. representation in media. So I kind of like it because they they don't like you know just make them all like happy go happy ever after kind of uh, queer couple because like most media sometimes uh, depict queer, queer couple as happy ever after or as mm -hmm. an alternative for another character who was supposed to be quote unquote straight to find a replacement that happens to be queer and that's just you know but mm -hmm. then, but Ruby and Sapphire it's much more like a normal couple so I that like I said I'm quite invested in the relationship and they are quite healthy in my opinion so yeah, I think I think with Steven Universe they did well if, with the relationships. Like I think I think I think Rebecca Sugar did wonderfully with um, Ruby and Sapphire. I think the whole like queer love triangle thing going on with Pearl and Rose Quartz was just beautiful. I think it's really well done. Um, I wish it had been a little bit more explicit that the gems are all technically non-binary. Yeah, definitely. but that, that's just a personal gripe, I think, <laughs> with fandom. <laughs> oh, yeah. I especially love, I, spe I almost forgot, I especially, especially, especially love um, the depiction of like abusive queer relationships and toxic relationships and think like with um with Jasper and Lapis I think was beautifully done and I know that was partially pulling pulling the writer's own experiences so I think it's a great 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 queer fiction written by a great queer artist <laughs> yep sorry you were the kit did you want to say something uh, I enjoyed it I enjoyed the the characters um my one issue with it is the whole kind of like the alien nature. You know, all of this is taking place with these alien, non-human, not different culture, different set of situations from servitude to other cultural norms within that, which it's something that's good as kind of like, it's a children's show. So it's a good beginning point. It's a good set of emotions and experiences, but there is this like line. A lot of this was like made by the, the media company. Oh, we, we can't have these be humans having these complex non-binary in, in human culture. You have to yeah. have this, this whole other thing. And that always kind of like, it's interesting. And so I can't always feel that, that, that direct parallel as uh, a grown adult, you know, I can appreciate it, and it's great mm -hmm. art, but I also see that 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 limiting otherness, which is played into it. For sure. Um, so if no one else wants to say anything, 
Um, I think this next question is a really good segue into what the, the other topics we were going to talk about, which is, as a cis white male in his 30s, I'm nervous about accurately, accurately representing queer people in my fiction and whether I even have the right to try. How would you advise me to go about it? I think Fen has opinions. <laughs> I have capital O opinions. Um, <laughs> we're, like, honestly, we're just people. Just if you find yourself writing just a bunch of guys over and over again, just swap some of the pronouns out. Put she and her in there. Put they and them in there. Have you got like majoritively um, heterosexual couples? Switch it up. Switch some of the pronouns around. You will find that the story itself is not changed and you will probably find that it's, you know, entirely richer. Um, like it's 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 a story if you want it rooted in realism then sure you can put in some of the trials and tribulations that queer people have to face as well but for me personally in the stuff that i'm writing i'm not doing that i'm not doing any of the uh, queer identities are focused around what we go through as queer people it's like queer identities should be around um if you've got two mums then how do you get out of the loop of ask your mum <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's a fun thing for a queer identity to be. Um, yeah. If you've got if you've got two dads, oh god, the dad jokes. Oh let's god. let's, just have, some, oh let's just have the same representation that every cis straight person gets. Of, isn't it your turn to load the dishwasher? No, I could have sworn I did it last night. What do you mean you taught the baby how to swear? She doesn't even understand that word. It was funny. Um, you know, just stuff like that. Just let's let's just have. And like Raven said, as hard as it is, toxic relationships as well. Us queer people, we're not perfect. Give us flaws. Mm. Don't be afraid to like make us people. We can't be paragons of queerness all the time. It's exhausting. So we, we like honestly, yes, we encourage you to write queer stories stop thinking that you need to have a special badge to do it we're just people the same as straight people are Absolutely. it's as simple as that yeah uh kit did you have anything to say sorry no I it's <laughs> well, quality writing just just make sure you write your character as well and uh as uh fen said make sure you can switch up the uh pronouns, their interests, whatever, as long as that quality writing is there, you're going to do a good job. It is only, only issues happen is when you're writing a book that focuses on the personal narrative of somebody in that situation. And you can still do that. It just takes a lot of research. You know, it's like, how, how much effort do you want to put into writing something on the trans experience and understanding that if you are not trans and not gone through that yourself. I mean, the advantage of uh, having a, a, a coming from that space as a writer is that you have all that experience yourself, you know? So the, having characters is awesome, especially if they're well-rounded and interesting and have connections with other people. Um, but, and, but you can do what you want. You just have to decide how much effort you want to put into it. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, do you want to say anything? Um, I think Ben said already most of it. <laughs> like, like, like they, yeah, like they said, just make us like, um, like any other straight couples out there. We're not perfect, like they said. Yeah. Mm. I think yeah. <laughs> not much to say. <laughs> it's okay. I'm still uh, taking words out of everyone's mouth now. So, so. I think the yeah. one. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the one thing that Fen didn't touch on that I think Kit did a little bit was uh, is my first thought is always write about us, not about our experiences. If you have no first-hand experience of us, you either need to spend a lot, like a very, very, very long time talking to queer people, uh, reading about our experiences, finding out and, and learning, or you just there's nothing wrong with having you know a cis white guy main character just surround him by gays have a gay friend that you have and and write them into the story with details changed just oh, i just, just want to yeah. sorry 
<laughs> I just wanted to say, if you've got a cis white male gay friend, um, the whole thing about, well, it's unrealistic to have more than one gay in your story, we travel in Incorrect. Packs. Incorrect, <laughs> yeah. I... We, are like, we are like penguins huddling together against the cold heteronormative world out there. Even if we don't know it. Like, yeah. even if every single one of us is closeted, somehow we will all be queer. <laughs> Every to time, the, without to the point where I am now actually surprised when one of my friends is straight. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I'm like, wait, you are? <laughs> what? <laughs> are Are you oh, sure no. about that? <laughs> yeah. How do you usually know? usually the answer is no. They're not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Siobhan, Siobhan in chat brought up a very good point. Yeah, make sure you have sensitivity readers who are in the community you're depicting. I myself, like, I have a lot of queer characters from a lot of different identities, and I'm pretty confident in my ability to write queer characters, but I think there are a few, like, types of queer that I'm not. Like, I'm not aromantic at all, to my knowledge. So if I were to put an aromantic character into my stories, which I think I am, yes, I am, I would have to find people who have those experiences and sensitivity writers who can look back over what I've written and tell me what I am and am not doing right. Um, so they're like an editor, but for your rep, editing your rep, they're great. Uh, and they're really easy to find online as well because everyone wants to make sure that their identity is, is, is represented well. So if you're ever not sure about something you've written, just go find someone who is and ask them, honestly. Uh, do we have any more questions? No. <laughs> what else did we want to talk about? What did we want to talk about? We wanted to talk about... Uh, go back to the group chat. Yeah. Go back to the group chat. Yeah. Yep, that's where I am. That's, that, this yes. is my notes. This is my cue card. Is the ranting we had. Yes. We, we are one hour, are we not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. thought so. Yeah, we're only here for an hour, so we don't we don't have to talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, half of the stuff that we were going to talk about we actually just touched on. I know. We're Quick just too good. Uh, happy mean, relationships, Jonas re developing relationships, Steven Universe. No. <laughs> well, we could go. We could we could touch on queer pandering for a second because we, I think it's important that we learn no. how to recognise that true i think it is quite yeah, thrown around true. a lot that like to the point where i've seen people now accusing actual real people of queer baiting and queer pandering just by being themselves yeah, which yeah. yeah. Is, it's not yeah I, I think we do need to so does anyone have any thoughts on that before i have some thoughts of that um, I, I know that a recent issue has been that, that authors have actually been getting outed from based off communities saying, oh, you're doing this. Like, the author's like, well, I really am bi. They've had needing to out themselves or having the publishers out them in order to be accepted. I think that on some level, you need to have, uh, until they prove otherwise, you need to have some level of trust of the, of the writer that they know what they're doing and that they do have the best entrance at heart, you know, and most yeah. of us writers are very, like, you can contest us directly and have conversations, you know, and lots of cool things like that. But as a community, I feel that, that you just really kind of need to trust the content creators for the most part up to a certain point, especially mm -hmm. in writing where it's very specific. I'm not talking about like Disney. Blame Disney yeah. all you want. Dis I, I yeah. encourage you to blame Disney. They don't pay their writers. <laughs> Disney so. all the way. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. I, you I see, think... see Disney throwing it. But yeah, but, <laughs> but for like read for like books and stuff, where we've seen a lot more of this issue go on, I think feel that it's important for you basically the first step is you have to trust that they are really trying to do their best until they prove otherwise. And then mm. you, you then you can have more of a detailed discussion with them. Yeah. I think just be, I think like just to just to summarize on that, just be as sensitive with your criticism as you would expect someone to be with their writing. So 
I would argue that in the day and age that we are in, where our content creators are immediately accessible to us thanks to the marvels of email and social media and instant messaging and stuff, I would argue that if someone you know is a content creator and they have actually published work, don't go into their DMs to critique their work because they've already had it critiqued before they've even before it's been published it's been through many iterations don't after the fact go and tell them that they wrote this queer person wrong because they know that queer character better than you do you know so if something's already published and you have some bad opinions of how the queer stuff is done discuss it among your friends sure say how you'd do it better don't go and harass the creator yeah <laughs> that's shit at the end of the day at the end of the day critiquing is what critics are for <laughs> There are professionals who will do that for us. We can have discussions about it online, but I think to the point where if, if, if you as an individual have the idea of DMing this one person, this one author and telling them all of the things they did wrong, guarantee at least 50 other people have had the same idea. <laughs> Never rains, but it pulls. Yeah. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? Um, not necessarily. I don't think I have anything to add at the moment. Yeah. I couldn't think anything up of my head. Hmm. Um, just to, um, just out of curiosity, because you said, Chris, that you are, um, you focus on queer representation with religion as well. Um, is there any way that you would suggest like to do or not do that kind of representation because if, if if someone happens to have a character that is of an ethnicity or faith where it's a little bit different like how would we go about balancing that without making it you know bad <laughs> uh okay so like for me i am a muslim writer so i if anything i need to follow like oh my, my religion islam so so we all so i just breathe that in islam that we, that queer is not really it's not allowed or it's just forbidden but at the same time if we meet with other queer people we are not allowed to do anything bad to them so if you're going to write that into fiction and let's just say you want to make like a queer muslim character in that i say well, I can't say that it's wrong because there are queer Muslims in the world. So it's more, so I'll just say that, sure, the, the religion says no, but then again, you're just a human. So so that you, sometimes you don't need to take the religion context at, into the queer character because that's just how they are. You're not like creating another pious person. You create, you are, writing another person just they just have this kind of beliefs in them it depends on the character so you can make the character um can make the character a queer but they still uphold their religion they're still following their own laws or you can make them queer but questioning themselves because the law the laws of their religion said so so it depends on what aspect of the character you're going to do when they are part of that religion itself so yeah Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I think we had a question that we missed that has been reposted. Sorry. <laughs> one further up from Brian as well. Yes, I've got a couple. Yeah, I've got that one. I'm going to do uh, one there, one there. Yeah, I haven't missed any more. Okay. So not really sure how to ask. When it comes to non-binary representation, how beneficial is the third or societal gender that's becoming more popular in sci-fi fiction? I think that's what that means, isn't it? Are there science, hidden... science fiction fantasy? Yeah. Oh, sci-fi fantasy. I knew that. I know acronyms and stuff. Are there hidden pitfalls for the creators <laughs> in this sort of representation? I think, uh, Kit, you said you do a bit of the the sci-fi. Um, yeah, I do a bit of the sci-fi. I do <laughs> think that uh, that I don't know, as a non-binary person. It, it, it's very difficult and very personal to just they them. I mean, like having this idea that there's this whole other third uh, group, you know. I mean, as it is, I don't fit in like either groups that will or any place, you know. We're all unique butterflies, you know. 
but I do think there is some valuable, except it's less of a... I mean, you have communities, you know, but usually they're small. But I don't really see how a, a monolithic third societal gender can really exist right now. But you're doing science fiction. You're doing fantasy. That's something you could easily do because you're like, hey, it has evolved to this point where this happens. So assuming that it's not like near future science fiction, you know, the, the advantage of science fiction fantasy is you can literally do anything you want. But as a personal thing, I'm a little bit... Uh, it doesn't really grab me, but I, as a science fiction writer, just do whatever you want. It's science fiction, you know. You could have like ten genders and like 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 whatever genetic engineering, you know. It's it's, it's kind of the funness. Uh, Fen, I can I can see opinions forming behind your eyes all the time. I I am the horrible <laughs> gremlin who is made of opinions. Um, so yeah, so Kit's absolutely right. Like there are no limits when it comes to sci-fi and fantasy. Um, if you want to create a society as part of your world building that has ten genders, then yeah, absolutely go nuts. One thing that um, Brian has brought up as sort of an expansion on that is: does it create more separation between genders, or is it inclusive? Um, I would argue that it's inclusive. Like there's a lot of hand wringing of um, well, if we sort of like start segregating people into male female non-binary surely that's just as bad as if we you know stop um allowing a non-binary gender at all and no it's not like as any cat owner will tell you there is a vast difference between getting in the box yourself and being put in the box by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so i have five of them <laughs> um, so yeah so like gender divides are the, as queer people, the labels we create for ourselves are to identify others and to let others that may identify the same as us know that we are here and we are safe and that they can join us. Um, when straight people identify as, first of all, they usually do it wrong. And <laughs> secondly, like it's less of a look, I'm not, I, they're not identifying themselves as safe, they're identifying us as other. Hmm. So. Yeah, so there's sort of like, if if written well, as many genders as you like can be incredibly inclusive, gender variances and stuff. But yeah, you've got to draw that line between sort of like putting someone in a box against their will and getting in the box yourself. Yeah. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Mm, I don't think so. I think Fen already said everything about it. You need, to stop I you need to start asking you first. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it's just that I, uh, I'll be honest, I haven't like indulged myself in queer fiction because, like I said, it's so hard to find it at my place. So, that's, yeah, that's completely fair. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that, yeah. yeah, that's my personal problem. <laughs> put that aside. <laughs> I think, like, personally, the third gender, the third gender in in sci-fi fantasy and other genres that I've seen as well now are popping up with that kind of thing. It It's a fine line, because I know that, like, me personally, I have done world building with, with, with uh, species and whatnot that have a third gender. I've also done world building with species that only have two, but one of them is is, is non-binary. Um, I think it just depends on A, the intent, um, B, who is writing it. I think if a non-binary author is writing a third, one third gender, then that's their prerogative, you know, like, like Fen said, there's the difference between being in the box and, and being put in the box. <laughs> um, I think it's a double-edged sword, to be honest. I think on one hand, it's normalizing the idea of third genders. But on the other hand, it's also normalizing the thought that non-binary, rather than being an umbrella term, is a third gender. And I hmm. think that's where the balance is a little bit tricky. I think, yeah. I, I think personally, if I were to go about that sort of thing, I'd probably just abolish gender entirely. <laughs> Down with gender. 
Uh, that's an important distinction actually that you've brought up is that non-binary is not a third gender non-binary is an umbrella like non-binary mm -hmm. is gender fluid but gender fluid is not non-binary yeah um like gender fluid agender and gender queer could all conceivably be different genders so yeah yeah um uh, Siobhan's actually raised a really interesting point. There are creatures in nature that essentially only have one gender. There's a type of lizard, I believe, exactly. that is entirely female. Exactly. And I want whatever they're having. The tr creatures that can change gender at will as well. Love yeah, those. There are, some, there are some fish that just go, okay, time to be a boy now. Like, I, oh, made, cool. I, I, I do have an, an alien race that I spend a lot. I spent a lot of my time world building that are mm. gender fluid by default and can shift their body to match. It's like I write about the Fae. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> What's your gender? Yes. Is there, is there such guess. thing as a wait language? As oh. a cis straight Fae? No. That just no. doesn't sound right. No. <laughs> it's just weird. No. <laughs> I think they don't like it. Put the it definition back. of Fae. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other question we had was, what do you say to writers who say, well, now there's plenty of queer writers out there, so I don't have to do it? Where? <laughs> Point me to them. <laughs> Please try again. These queer writers. <laughs> <laughs> A, yeah, where? Uh, uh, show me <laughs> this abundance of queer writers that I'm missing out on. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And, and two, if you think that there are so many queer authors now that you don't need to bother, then it's probably best you're not bothering anyway. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> my personal opinion is going to be the polar opposite of that. If you think there are so many queer writers that you don't need to bother, I challenge you to find the queer writer that has the exact same writing style and the exact same stories that you do, because nobody can tell the stories the way you can. Like, even if Raven and I were given the same story premise, oh, we course, would yeah. write different <laughs> We write very we different given, stories. <laughs> if we were given the same queer pairing with the same, like, starting prompt, we would write different stories. There is no such thing as too many queer writers. You know what there are too what many of? I get that. I think where I was, <laughs> I, I think, like, where I was coming from was, like, I think the most people, most of the people who who would say something like, "There's so many queer writers, I don't have to bother with queer queer rap," are not queer. That's true, <laughs> because mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah, sure true. most queer writers know that there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chris, do you have opinions? Do you not have opinions? Honestly, I mean, <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say like, okay, if you don't want to do queer things to your story or book, then go ahead. Just don't harass them or question them why they do queer in the first place. It's sometimes, yeah, like sometimes mm. these, these authors of the disturb queer writer because they write queer. Like, okay, they, they write queer. What's your problem? Just don't disturb them. That's their, that's their interest. You do you. You do you, boo. That's it. <laughs> Definitely don't disturb us while we're writing. That's a death sentence. Please. Don't do it. Please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can be quite feral. <laughs> feral? Am, I, am I feral when you interrupt me when I'm writing? Not really. Oh, she said oh, not really. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so just say yes there. <laughs> not really. That means kind of yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's still a yes. Um, Kit, what what would you say to such a people? <laughs> um, I'd say that um, I mean everybody needs representation, but you know, also as a writer, like nobody has to write anything other than what they want to write. It's just once you write it, you can you do have to have like decisions that you make. You know, you really should bring in thoughts and ideas, and interesting things, and queer personalities and things into your writing, but if you're a writer, you are God, write what you want, either people will buy it or read it or not, you know, I'm sure we all have experience as writers and people just not reading your things, you know, that's okay, you know, I think uh, it's almost a 
better issue to pu pu publishers and all of the gatekeepers that keep all of the, the things out, you know? I mean, you're a writer. Mm, yeah. You know, and, and as a writer, if you want to be published through the gatekeepers, you have to make some decisions, and that's a separate issue. I really think that... Uh, the one thing to think about more than the writers when we're talking about representation is the gatekeepers. Yes, you're absolutely right. A lot of the problem is with publishers mm. um, telling absolutely. us to totally not shit. <laughs> a grenade has been dropped in chat. <laughs> oh, um, well, we're not going to address the grenade no, in the room. No, no I'm addressing the grenade. Um, <laughs> no, all, I, all I'm going to say is that it generally, if in the entirety of this panel I have mentioned, uh, I can think of one, but I'm not going to go there. It's probably JK. Mm -hmm. But that is all we are doing. That is all we are going to say about that. Are, are we really, we're really going, going to address that? No, 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 we're just going to say that her list of no. sins is too big to be recounted at this point. Way too long. Put her as, back in the box. Mm, let's see. As Brian said, that is a five hour panel of its own. <laughs> <laughs> No, it will just... be 10-hour, doubled it, doubled it. Doubled yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, we're... Too <laughs> we're, I knew uh... somebody was going to do it. I knew someone was going to throw a grenade. I was honestly <laughs> expecting it to be 10. <laughs> do we have any other questions? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say, we're, we're, we're heading towards the end yes. of the panel now. We only have seven minutes left, so if anyone has anything to ask... And they did tell me to try and end it five minutes early so that we can you know show we have two off. minutes left so if anyone has anything to ask yes speak now one minute left <laughs> or forever hold your <laughs> grenades um <laughs> oh no thank you thank you for it's coming okay. it's okay i yes. uh, one day thank um, you for do you here. guys have anything that you want to um plug anything that you guys are doing um any, any <laughs> queer fiction you want to plug follow my twitch and watch me cry as i try to finish my nano remo from 2020 <laughs> uh, oh no don't remind uh, me yes oh we got a question ooh, 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 ooh. can gay villains <laughs> be done without becoming a problem <laughs> yeah yes yeah absolutely yes yeah queer villains can be very well done I want to see a queer villain who has had enough of the way we are treated and has just fucking snapped. <laughs> yep. Like a Magneto style queer villain. Like, kind of right though. <laughs> so, personally, mm -hmm. like, the problem with queer villains isn't usually that they're queer, it's usually that they are the only piece of queer, the even vaguely queer rep in that piece of media. Mm. So if your villain is queer, if your hero is queer, if several supporting characters are queer, absolutely fine. If the only queer person in the media is a villain, that's a problem. Again, I, I point mm -hmm. to Jasper yeah. and Steven Universe. Incredibly well done queer mm. villain. Yeah. Um, because everybody's queer in that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, plug. Any anyone else have anything to plug before I take over? <laughs> Too many projects. Um, Chris, 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 Chris. You also have a Twitch why, channel. Why do you, you not? Keep calling me? <laughs> why you call, keep calling me? I was lagging. <laughs> Do we? Because I know me and me and me and Fen have plugged our Twitches, but yeah, I think somebody posted it very early on. Mm -hmm. Everybody's Twitches. There we go. Um, if no one else is plugging anything, because I don't, I don't want to like be the only one plugging besides Fen. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay. you, thank uh, you. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I have stuff that's not specifically queer unless you want to read my poetry book. Shit. Nobody wants to read nice. my poetry book. <laughs> <gasps> I, I, mm, I have some, <laughs> I have some things that I do. Um, my main project at the moment, which uh, people will see me working on stream a lot, 
um, generally, especially during Nano, is my Nano project from twen 2019. <laughs> 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 I am now doing the first edit of. <laughs> Um, but that was that's the one that I was talking about earlier. It's called uh, it's called the Truth series. It's going to be endless, um, and it it follows um, a group of uh, people who were kidnapped as children and grew up in this really weird like facility environment. It's got it's got it's got magic. It's got pseudoscience. It, it's it's got pseudo-scientific magic <laughs> it's got queer everything everyone's queer um and it it mostly focuses on the interpersonal sort of struggles between them all um with their weird sci-fi fantasy life experiences and how it has changed the way they they behave and see the world and each other um there's i have put every form of, of of queer rep in there that I can possibly muster because I don't know how to write a straight character. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, the first the, the the first and second novel of that series are in the works. You'll see me working working on them a lot on stream. And the other thing that I'm working on is um, a group world building project. It's another urban fantasy. It's called Cyberfay. It is an open world project, so anyone can participate and contribute. I will um, probably leave a link to it somewhere. Um, it's very quiet and very little at the moment because there's only a few of us and there's no uh, activity um, <laughs> quota that you have to meet because I can't meet it. <laughs> But it's it focuses on the world. If all of a sudden the Fey went, you know what? We're here. We exist. Ooh. We want equal rights. No, um, <laughs> not quite as ham-fisted <laughs> as that, but basically. Um, and it it explores sort of how humanity would respond to that, and how elves respond to that, and all of the elves are queer. As it should all be. of them. All of them. There's no such thing as a straight cis elf. <laughs> Good. Um, okay. We're out of yes, time. We are, because I. That's why. That's why. That's why. As it should Keep be. Going. Okay. Keep going. I want to thank yeah. all four of our panelists today. Uh, stupid. All of our panelists for speaking with us today, um, and uh, I, I think we covered a lot of really great stuff. Um, and uh, and thanks to everybody who attended. Thanks to everyone who followed me. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the next panel on the track, which is screenwriting. Um, and there's also uh, writing books with English as a second language and then the chill and chat stream. Oh, God. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, enjoy day two. Ooh. OK, let's raid. Let's raid. Maybe. Is raid party. I don't know. Hold on. I got my second panel. You might oh no. Me. You'll do great. You did great. Everyone <laughs> did going? great. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm a nervous wreck. So am I. We're going to be great. <laughs> At least you were put in charge. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay, I got to go. My second panel is actually starting. <laughs> Sorry. Good luck. Bye. Bye. No, no, it's okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs>